Aren't you done with that thing yet? Almost. Just have the tires and wheels left to go. <laughs> and the bug. There, there's a bug floating around on top there. But I oh. think that we put these on there. <laughs> then we put those. Uh, no, no, that ain't gonna work. No, that ain't gonna work. We'll, put, I, we'll just put these on there. Hey, I like the idea of taking out all this complicated high-tech suspension and putting some straight axles underneath. Straight there axles, lift, some lift big old wheel springs yeah. on there. So no, that's that a right really. I can get into. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, hey, thank you all for tuning in. Today's episode, we're going to show you how to take a stock Hertz rental car and make it a four-wheel drive. <laughs> That would be a great video. That would be an amazing <laughs> video. No, today we're talking tires, and uh, Mike's going to do a major brain dump, and believe me, the things that he's going to go over is the way that I now do my tires. I've been doing it for years, years. now, yeah. and it just because it works, and it's an amazing system, and you're like that, in and out, instead of sitting there with the little brush going, and your arms oh, getting tired, yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. And actually, it's cold in here. I just feel I have goosebumps. But anyways, I'm going to do my little spiel. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And tune in to all of their live detailing classes with Mr. Mike Phillips, where you're going to learn tons of information. And it's always good, right? Yeah. The day you don't learn anything is the day that you don't learn anything? Yeah, well, I always try to share <laughs> tips and techniques, things that help you detail cars faster. But always keep your quality pro level, pro grade. All right, well... You have two things here, so let me get over here and get behind where I need to be at, okay. and then we can get going here. Yeah. And speaking of hand scrubbing, <laughs> you walked I had completely I always walk out of frame. Speaking of hand scrubbing, I always fr I forgot to grab this. You know, I'm very, very prepared. I got a lot of stuff here, but I forgot this. You forgot okay. one brush. That's it. We got to do it all over. Uh, so I want to talk about... Uh, machine scrubbing and that's why I grabbed this brush so most this is a tire scrubbing brush you know there's actually a science to the bristles um, a, a short length bristle that's stiff works better to clean the tire and it's easier on the muscles in your grip and your hand than a long bristle brush so there's there's actually a science to the bristles and this is a great tire cleaning brush and if you want to scrub tires by hand uh, continue doing so but back in 2016 flex sent me a prototype for what's called the flex uh, PE150. This is the cordless rotary. And if Yancey were to zoom in, you can actually tell that this is two different colors of red because it was a prototype. It's not a, it's not a production unit. I'm and it also in. doesn't have a serial number. And I've been using this since 2016. And the mistake I made was not documenting how many cars I've detailed with this thing. Like, I do a lot of full write-ups of everything I detail. And just keeping a track of how many times I use this, because this has probably been in the hundreds, if not thousands. Now, another thing that makes this unique is this has a 14 millimeter arbor, and I'm sharing that for a reason. So this is a metric backing plate, <laughs> and that's um, where the fun comes in. Yeah, and I have used this to to machine scrub literally thousands, well, not thousands, hundreds of tires. Okay, but. One of the things that I wish I had was a metric extension like this, and I don't. So this is why I will tend to use a, a U.S. version, because I can put this extension on there. What that does is it allows me to get that lower flat spot on a tire if I don't lift the car off the ground. So it'll work either way, but that's kind of one of the cool things, but I don't have a metric extension. Now, back in 2013, I made the first video that I know of, before anybody else, showing how to... Machine scrub tires. The trusty, dusty porter cable. The porter cable. And this is a set of 40 inch Toyos on a, on a lifted Silverado I had. And I remember I spent about 45 minutes of tire scrubbing the heck out of them because I was going to put a tire coating on them and you'd have to get the tires surgically clean. But the problem with the free spinning tool like this, in fact, let me, let me mark this. I always try to keep a Sharpie here. So the thing about a free spinning tool, and the reason we marked the backing plates is so when you're buffing paint, you can see the pads stall out. But the problem with this when you're machine scrubbing tires is it stalls out too, okay? So does it work? Yeah, if you buzz this up to six. I mean, it'll maintain rotation. Um, and it worked good. It's what we had at the time. Now, the problem with something like this is it's plugged into electricity. Gee, I wonder why. 
<laughs> and, water uh, and electricity. Does it mix? Yeah, and one of the things we cover in our classes is called extreme prep wash. It's where we do all the things you can do to get a car clean before you bring it into the shop to start doing all the paint correction work. And that includes topical glass polishing, wet wash engine detailing, machine scrubbing tires, cleaning the wheels, chemical decontamination, mechanical decontamination, cleaning the jams, uh, machine scrubbing any cladding. So any plastic cladding, I also show machine scrubbing that instead of, I mean, you, again, the human hand is just so limited. And then, of course, washing the car. There's a lot of, in the headlight correction, so there's a lot of things you can do during what I call the wet work, because it's the wet work you're doing. And, uh, but machine scrubbing tires is one of them. So in 2013, I made this, and then in 2016, Flex sent me this, and it was in 2018, 2017, they actually launched this, and I got the first one at SEMA. And then in 2018, I discovered this brush, okay, it's Which called a rotary a, DA brush. You put a four and three eighths backing plate on here and now you can machine scrub tires and no pad stalling. Yeah, because it's definitely this, not stopping. It's a gear driven tool. And um, anyway, so, and then I just want to make a comment that as the hundreds of tires I've cleaned with this, I've never had a break. Now, I don't dump water on it, and when I'm done, I wipe it down. I take good care of my tools, but I've never destroyed, hurt, harmed, or stalled out one of the Flex cordless rotaries from using it to do wet work. I also show this same system in our boat detailing classes to machine scrub non-skid, okay? That's, I mean, That's a great time saver. It is a great way to clean non-skid, because non-skid is just basically like little square mountains everywhere, and it gets oxidation, and again, trying to scrub that by hand is just really tedious when a machine will just knock it out. Uh, anyway, so machine scrubbing tires. Then probably about four or five years ago, uh, the lazy side of myself thought, you know, instead of taking and applying a tire dressing by hand with a little applicator pad, I put the tire dressing onto the tire and machine applied it with the same brush. Mm -hmm. And it works it into all the nooks and crannies and grooves and what's called siping, the lines on the side of a tire. Well, there's definitely some of that on my tires back right behind you. So. Yeah. So, uh, and I've never looked back after that either. Anyway, I've got a bunch of cool tools, but let's go ahead and get started. And then as we get to these different things, I'll explain what they're for. So the first thing we want to do is I have some water here. So let's go ahead and just get the tire wet and do a, a, a rinse to remove any loose stuff. And just going to show you guys the tire before. So that way you always can come back and, you know, see how it started. And one of the reasons we're using this is because I don't got to get down on the ground uh, with my artificial legs. It's always kind of cumbersome. And this is like chest high, waist high, so it makes it a lot easier to work on. Yeah, try putting it up there, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a totally different okay. story. Okay, so over here, I've got a couple different things. Now, this is the Dr. Beasley's premium wheel cleaner. This is the intensive wheel cleaner. The difference is this is for, like, tires that are neglected, have really baked on brake dust. This is for tires that are wheels that are in better shape. I'm, I'm going to show these over on the Camaro, but this is something I've been asking Jim Lefebvre, the man behind Dr. Beasley's, to make me for some time. This is a foaming tire cleaner, and the reason I wanted him to make me a foaming tire cleaner is because if you're ever going to put a tire coating on, or if you just want to know that your tires are clean, you want to get to where you can see white foam. And usually, when you start out scrubbing, if you've got old dressings, you've got tire browning, which is technically called blooming, you've got road grime or traffic film on there, when you scrub the tire, the foam is going to turn a brown, grayish color. And at that point, you know it's not clean enough, so you've got to keep scrubbing it until you get to white foam. But if your tire cleaner doesn't foam, you can never visually tell if you've got that tire clean enough. So let me go ahead and let's see what we can do here. Let me spray some more on there. Uh, okay, sorry. Gravity was causing it to run down while I was sitting there talking. There, see the foam? That's what you want. You want to be able to see a foam on the tire and you want to be able to see it turn white. And look at this. I mean, because this is a gear driven tool, there's nothing I can do to stop them bristles. Look at that, Nancy. Just, it just completely gets in there. Can you get and they go down low. <laughs> That's the only way. That's the only way tires. to do these tires, I tell you. See where the water's still resting? That's where you see the foam. Anyway, uh, but that's just, you know, this is how I clean tires. I don't waste my time with a hand brush, taxing all the muscles on my arm and my, my grip. 
when I know I'm not going to get it near as good. Now see how this is kind of brown? Okay. And these things are pretty dirty. So at that point, you want to go ahead and rinse. And then here's the mistake most people make, but because you watch this video, you won't be one of those people. If you want to clean it again until you get to white foam, but you take your dirty brush and put it up there, you'll never see white foam because this is going to contaminate the freshly applied cleaner. So what I usually show people is, I'm not outside, I'll bring that over, I'll show that, but what I would say is, you've already got cleaner on there, let the brush clean itself. So that's normally how I would do it. If I'm outside washing the car, I would just spray the water in there, let it clean itself. But today, just for fun, I tried this and it worked too. This is a grit guard pad washer. And it's got these little, can you come in here and show this? When you pump it up and down, see how it pumps the cleaning fluid up? So I just put it in here and bump it up and down. Spin it a little bit. Boom, I got a clean brush. Okay, now, sure. when I put the cleaner on here and go to clean this tire again, it's either gonna turn brown or it's gonna turn white. And if it turns white, then I know I've got a completely clean sidewall and I'm ready to go to the next step. So let's see what happens. Look at that white, see? And that is the benefit to a foaming tire cleaner. It's a visual indicator if you've got the tire clean enough to move on to the next set of tires. And for anybody that's asking, I have this on the uh, speed setting one. You don't really, here's what, that's just too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's called sling it everywhere. <laughs> I'm getting my beautiful detailed core Camaro over there. This is actually probably the most knobbiest uh, tire I've ever machine cleaned, Yancey. Do you take this thing mudding a bunch? Yes, I do. <laughs> and believe me, they sling mud like no tomorrow. Oh, man, this thing is knobby. Okay. Now, to me, that looks pretty white. I mean, that looks like I've got everything off. Of course, we'll go ahead and rinse. And, you know, if, if we wanted to check it again, then clean this. I'll just do it real quick just to prove it. Clean this. But that is part of the key. You've got to clean that brush before you do the next application or you'll never see the whiteness of the cleaner. I'll just do this. I'll do the whole thing. Okay. Make sure this thing's really clean. Because it's for you, you know. Aww. Boom. We have a clean tire. There's no more browning coming off. There's no more old tire dressing coming off. There's no uh, blooming, no road grime, no traffic film. You know, you know, a lot of times your tires... If they got road film on them, they'll also have brake dust because road film is oily, so that makes it sticky. And that means as you're, you hit the brakes, you have the brake dust not only on the rims, but you have it ended up on the tires. Okay, so that looked pretty clean to me. So I'll give this final rinse. Then I'll show you machine applying and dressing. Okay, that looks pretty clean. Okay, my other favorite tool, the Ego Leaf Blower. We're going to drain off the top.
What do you think? Look clean? Mm -hmm. Look dry? Yep. Clean and dry. That was the goal. Okay. So now, at this point, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to take and uh, I want to switch to a dry brush to apply the dressing. But I want to share a technique with you. The Velcro that comes on these five inch rotary brushes is really strong, has strong attachment, and it's glued onto the back. So if you try to pull it off, what happens is you pull the adhesive, you pull the Velcro off of the brush. So here's two ways that I use to pull it off without removing the actual Velcro. Either your handy dandy knife or even a porter cable PC wrench is what this is called. And you want to bring this down in here. You're basically just like going to go in here and s slice it off. Oops. You hear me slicing? Okay, then a little bit of prying. There. That's what I mean. This will actually come off. So if you try to pull off, you'll pull it all the way off. You don't want to do that. So just uh, the knife actually works better, but take and uh, slice it off, and then you can attach it to your backing plate or store it, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put this on my trusty, dusty prototype here. You want to send this up as good as you can. There we go. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tire dressing on. Now, this is the Dr. Beasley's tire conditioner. It conditions, moisturizes, nourishes, and provides UV protection. So it's more than just a dressing. And you can control the shine by how many applications you apply. And what I like about it is it dries to the touch. Okay, so after you apply it and it dries, there's nothing that's going to sling off. Now, here's how I do this for machine applying. I just take one of these little, it's a stain brush. You can pick these up for a couple bucks at Lowe's. Come in here like this and just start... Applying this onto the sidewall here. Aw, you're painting. I'm going to call you Bob Ross. Bob Ross. You know, the first videos you and me made back at the Geek, you know, t 12 years ago, it's when we had that crappy little garage and we were working on that crappy little Mustang. And uh, I was talking really slow. Oh. Someone says, Mike, you sound just like Bob Ross when you talk about detailing. I'm going to paint it a happy little swirl right here. <laughs> and uh, at the time, I recognized the name Bob Ross, but not being an artist like you, uh, it didn't really connect until years later when I stumbled across him on like public broadcast <laughs> to station. And oh, that's Bob Ross. And I listened to him talk, and he does. He's we need to get the hairdo like him. He's just very passionate about stroking colors. Yeah. Okay. So Happy then, happy little trees. Applied that. And now, I worked it pretty good on the brush, but this is really going to work it in. Low speed. You see how, look at your lettering. See that? It just completely shoves that dressing in everywhere. And of course, at Dr. Beasley's, you got to remember, we don't sell hands. We sell tools. <laughs> so I'll do this one, then you got to do the rest, Nancy. Well, I'll be teaching my daughter how to do it. She's the one that's been driving it, so. And actually, if you work this long enough, you can pretty much work it till it's completely dissipated and dry. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off here though. I hate doing things that are like watching paint dry and grass grow or water boil, you know, in a live video because people have short attention spans and they click away, but, you know, it's their loss. Okay. Well, here's Boom. the thing that I like to point out is that technique. I mean, look at all the different textures that this tire has. It has these short knobs and it's got my monster claws going down the side, <laughs> but then all the lettering and stuff and that worked it in there's no gaps there's no it's 
Good job, Mike. Thoroughly dressed. I'm glad all those now, things I've been telling you over the years, you're finally listening. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, these are some really nice, high-quality microfiber towels you can get from the rag company. Um, a lot of people would grab a towel and wipe that off. Uh, no, don't want to do that. These are some 77 cents a piece washcloths you can buy at Walmart. And here's why I like a, a simple, cheap washcloth instead of a fancy, fluffy microfiber towel. The size is right, and it's stout, has some stoutness to it, because I want to come in here, and I'm going to be rubbing on a very irregular surface. So now I can come in and use this towel to just come in here, wipe any excess off to give it that uniform dark. The word is sheen, gives it a sheen, dark black sheen. And then I don't waste my really nice microfiber towels doing grunt work like this, you know. Yeah, I was going to say. And look, at, there's, there's hardly any black coming off, you know, for a tire that's pigmented using carbon black, you know, that's pretty amazing. That's because we got it super, super clean. And, of course, this would be the process I would use if you were to use one of the popular tire coatings on the market. And we were talking about tire coatings before this started, right, Yancy? Yeah. And tire coatings unlike a dressing, is kind of like a paint coating in a way, only it's usually like an acrylic product, and it, um, it cures and bonds to the finish, and it doesn't really come off, but you got to be, you got to then take care of it. You can't just manhandle that tire and throw a tire cleaner on there. You'll take the coating off. So what I was telling Yancey was, um, I like tire coatings, but only for specific types of cars, like that 1970 Cuda back there. That's got your iconic BF Goodrich TA radials with a smooth, smooth sidewall. And um, if you take and machine scrub that, get it really nice and clean, and you put about five applications of the Tough Shine tire dressing, they will look like wet plastic, dry to the touch. Kind of like this. This is actually a very deep, dark black look. It's actually very shiny. All right, this is where you pause, you rewind, you go to the beginning and <laughs> see what it looked like before. Yeah. But then you look like what it's after. Yeah, and, and uh, anyway, it, it'll dry to the touch. And if you want it even shinier, add a second coat. But that's how I like to machine clean and then machine apply a tire dressing to tires. And a lot of tires have what's called siping. So if you ever look at a sidewall and you see all these like in, uh, lines, uh, they are such a pain to clean and to dress. Trying and the brush gets in there and does it all. I don't know if those ones have it or not, the Camaro. Okay. No, I, don't, I, uh, I think it does. It actually got some siping. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about cleaning uh, complicated modern uh, wheels with sensitive finishes on it. Now, this wheel over here has a, um, a semi-gloss finish to it. And um, so it's, it's not shiny, but it's not matte. And uh, there's a rock chip right there. Um, but at the same time, you want to be careful. Now, I'm a big fan of the wheel, Braun Brush Wheel Woolies. By the way, if you don't have one of these, this is called a knee and back cushion. You get them up at Amazon, they're about 60 bucks. They're nice and thick. They won't puncture. They won't absorb water. And most important thing, as you can see, is they're going to keep my butt from getting wet, my pants. <laughs> so uh, you got to have one of those. we got about eight of them here for our classes so everybody can stay dry while they're working on cars. Now... This is my technique for washing gloss black wheels, or in this case, um, semi-gloss wheels. What most people would do, and there's nothing wrong with this, is they'd grab a nice brush like this is one we, whoops, that we threw across the room. My kung fu reflexes did not kick in. Oh, okay. Daniel son. <laughs> Uh, this is a boar's hair wheel face brush, one of my favorite brushes I use is for engine detailing, interior cleaning, and also for cleaning wheels. And this is a Dr. Beasley's version. It's also very soft too, so both these work great for wheel cleaning. But when I want to be super safe, and especially with glossy black wheels, and anytime I detail a car with glossy black wheels, the first thing I do is I grab a swirl finder light and I walk the customer, the owner, and look at his wheels, and we look to see if they're already scratched up because most people don't get down low and look. And in almost every case, they're scratched up. And I want to point it out that they're scratched before I ever touched it so they don't blame me. But here's what I do. I've already mixed up some Dr. Beasley's premium car wash in here. You can see the soap. Okay. I take four clean inspected microfiber towels, dump them in here, one towel per wheel. So instead of using a brush, I actually put my hands down there and carefully hand clean the wheels. Not the backs of the wheels, just the face, the spokes. So that's how I clean 
That's how I clean. I'm going to come back and grab some brushes here. So that's how I clean sensitive wheels is by hand. And then you can make a decision. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll bring these over here to the slop sink and I will wash them by hand as best as I can. If I feel I've gotten any brake dust or any other particulates out of there, I will go ahead and then put them in the wash machine and reuse them. If not, you can pitch them. You're only out four towels. Okay, so then we've got the Wheel Woolies uh, wheel cleaning brush here. These are great because this nylon shaft is strong. If they're really dirty. This is what this is for. So you get in there and you push. You don't just go like this. You get in there and scrub, okay? Uh, this is the Easy Detail Brush. And I like this because you can bend this and get behind the spokes. And then this is a Boar's Hair Tire Brush. And, and this is just a, I think this is a Tough Shine Tire Brush. But again, I don't really like to scrub tires by hand anymore, so I don't use these. And then here's a one inch round wheel wheelage brush, and this is good for getting into uh, the wheel barrels and also around the valve stem. So let's walk over there with some of our tools for this, and let me demonstrate how Mike Phillips will clean a wheel. Now, I've already got a bucket set up over here. Notice it says wheels and tires. And um, if you ever want to get IDA certified, one of the tests for the skills validation test is how many buckets... Oh, is... you're telling questions, answers? <laughs> I'm helping people. So let me put a little glug, glug. There's the glug, glug method. It's a precise method to measure out an exact quantity of soap. And then you want to stir this up, and wherever I go, I take a stirring stick. It looks like this. Jokes don't get any better, people. He's here until five. And the reason you want to put some soap, <coughs> excuse me, into a dedicated bucket is because it just never feels right to bring down brushes that are dry or just wet with water. Soap creates lubrication. It helps things to release off surface. There's all kinds of reasons to use the quality soap. So now I'm going to just place these in here. So I got my wheel brushes ready to go. Whoops. Yeah, don't fall on camera. Yeah, this is like the worst thing for a guy with an artificial leg. Oh, I need my brush, my machine. I don't want to sit down there yet. Okay, Yancey, can you kind of go down low and show them yep. the block of wood I got there? Oh, yep. Okay, there's another little thing I did. So I took a floor jack, and a lot of times if, I, if, if I'm doing show car work, if it's a daily driver, I don't care that much, but if I'm actually doing show car work, then... What I want to do is I take and I lift, jack up the car using the safe jack lifting points, place a block under it so now I can get the lip, the flat spots, what that's called the flat spot. Okay, that's really slippery down here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to clean the wheels. Can you bring me the water, water sprayer? Now there's a reason you want to clean wheels before tires, okay, or, or rims as some people would say. And the reason why is because I'm going to be spraying some Wheel cleaner here. I'll see my wheel cleaners over there. Just grab me the uh, intensive, it'd be good. The, all right. Yeah. Sorry for the camera, I keep swinging around. Oh, people. sorry about that. Where's the set director? Okay. Now, when you go in here, go in here, you start cleaning up inside the rim, behind the spokes, the calipers, back here on the hub, and you clean it and you rinse it, you're not going to get everything rinsed out. So, when you're cleaning the tires, gravity will naturally make all the liquids back there, which is removed brake dust, road grime, and your cleaner in the water to drain down and pool. Okay, so then when you rinse the tire, you come back and rinse the wheel a second time, and you rinse out all these f substances and fluids that have pooled in lower areas. Then you end up washing the car after doing wheels and tires, and when you wash the car, you come back, you got a third time to rinse the wheel to get all those chemicals that pooled in via gravity. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, of course, is always knock off any loose stuff, um, take the intensive brake dust cleaner, remover, and spray it in here real good, hit the brace. And here's a technique tip. I always see people doing this. Hold this back, and when you pull a really good pull, it atomizes, and you get more wheel cleaner, you get better bang for your buck. So that's just a little technique tip if it helps anybody out there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to go to the barrel, and for that, let's grab my favorite brush. This is the wheel woolly. So it's got some soap in there. I've got some cleaner in here. And you just come in here and scrub like that. See how I'm pushing down. Any, any detailer needs to have this brush. And don't get the knockoffs. Go to Braun Brush or go up to Dr. Beasley's. We carry these things. Get the real deal. You know, it's matte pricing, so it doesn't really matter where you buy. It's going to be the same price. And I always like it when people, if they get their help from somebody, just like when you tip your waiter, you know, because you, they give you good service. If you're finding you get good information from these videos, go visit drbeasley's.com. You know, give them the tip. Give them your business. Don't give it to the other guy that never showed you nothing. Man, I've been teaching people how to detail cars from 1987. 
And, you know, I never mind if someone says, well, thanks for the help. I'm going to go over here and buy it. But, you know, you would never go to a restaurant, have great food, leave, and go down to another restaurant that you didn't eat at and tip that waiter. (laughs) You just wouldn't do that. So I have this article. It's called Your Profit, Our Squat. And that's what that talks about. Okay, so now I've done the barrel. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab my easy detailer. And just come back here and get the backs of the spokes. Now, to me, this is always like the biggest waste of time. Uh, People expect this when they're paying for a premium detail. But the thing is, is I know that most of my clients, they don't have this brush and they're never going to do this. So all the cleaning I do is for nothing. But it's still expected. It's a part of the details, so of course, we you all, know it was done. We all do it. And, of course, you know you did. You did the job right. Okay, so I've never touched the face of the wheel with any of the brushes yet. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to grab my one inch and just get in here and get the barrels for the lug nuts. And I also like to use this on the valve stem. Now look up here, Yancey. See that flexing? Yeah. Here's another important tip. When you're cleaning your, someone else's or your own car's wheels, and you've got a brush, don't ever knock that with the brush. A lot of times these are made in other countries and exposure to ozone, the rubber rots, it dries, and they're brittle, and it'll break right off. And instead of detailing the car, now you're changing a flat tire. But I do like this to come in here and just give a little a dedicated cleaning attention around the valve stem without breaking it off. While I'm here, I'll hit these beautiful uh, yellow calipers. Okay. Get them to be just as pretty as the yellow stripes on the paint. Okay, and now I'm ready to go to the little technique tip that I was sharing. And that is to take one towel in my soapy solution, and I'm just going to use this to gently clean all the spokes. Okay, and your fingers, you know, can get behind here and get... All you pros know what I'm talking about. This is where it accumulates and it's tough to get out. Okay. corners. So spend a little time in the corners... And then you won't have to come back after the fact and go, ah, nuts, I left the dirt in the corners. But this is how I like to gently, safely clean uh, sensitive wheels, matte wheels, and especially high gloss black finished wheels. I never really see the problem so much with factory wheels that are clear coated. And I know I was told one time by someone in the industry that the paint that they use on wheels is a lot harder than the paint that's used on the body panels of a car. Makes sense. So, yeah, it makes sense. It's got to be heat resistant. It's, it's low to the ground. It gets contaminated. Okay, then come in here. And, I, and since I'm here, I might as well go back here and just see if I can't get that a little bit since I'm done with this towel. And then normally I would have another bucket, I forgot to grab it, where all my dirty towels go. And I'm a big proponent of never letting things like this touch the ground. So I'm just going to spray it, lay it on here for right now. Okay, so then time to rinse. And if you don't have one of these, this is my favorite sprayer. Go to Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's just your basic you know, Chinese sprayer. Of course, I got my brass con- disconnects for turning water and things off. But what I like about this is the shower setting, okay? Shower and jet. That's really all I ever use. And I use the shower setting for cleaning engine, for doing engine detailing. In our classes, I teach people the intelligent way to clean a motor. And that's not with high pressure, which pushes water into places it shouldn't get, but with just a gentle spray. You should clean it using brushes and a great degreaser and use elbow grease to do the cleaning, not high pressure. And just to comment on that, a lot of times when you get done doing a wet wash engine detail, the engine will turn on and you won't see a check light. It's not till two years down the road where water got into where there's electrical connections and caused corrosion, then you get the problem. So don't be that guy. <laughs> okay, so now this is rinse. Right now as I'm talking, all those chemicals I may not have totally rinsed off are pooling. Come back with... X, machine scrubbing. Oh, remember we had that compound up here. Yeah, so. uh, That was the white that was on top of the tire, if you guys noticed it. So I sanded about half of this car to remove orange peel, surface texture, and solvent pop. And then I come back and took a wool pad with a rotary with NSP 150. And then I came back with 95 and a foam pad, and I actually finished out with 45 and a porter cable again because most of the paint on this car is incredibly soft. Okay, and, and this is why I put this on blocks, so you can get down here and get what's called the flat spot. And now, you can, of course, do it the old school way, clean Roll all the tires. 
yeah, roll the car, get in the car, you're all dirty and wet, roll the car forward, then sit on the ground and do it four more times. But if you've got a floor jack and a two by four, or in this case a four by four, it, it just it helps you to do professional grade work. Again, if this was a daily driver, I'd just shove that brush down there as hard as I could and call it good. Okay, now I've rinsed the tire, second rinse on the wheel. You can just shove this all the way up inside here, rotate it, and really get that dirt out of there. And of course, in the real world, after I did this, I'd do the next three wheels and tires, then I'd start at the top of the car, work my way down, and at the final risk, I'd have a third, even a fourth time to rinse this and completely remove any cleaners, brake dust, road grime, traffic film, all that good stuff. Um, okay, that's kind of it. Uh, again, then for a car like this, what I would do is I would dry it off, I'd throw the dressing on there, machine apply it, and uh, move on to the next wheel and tire. So there right. you go. Sure. And look, my pants are still dry. There you go. Did you bring your squeegee? No, I did not. <laughs> right, you grab your I'll put my flex cordless fan in here and dry all this out. Okay, uh, that's kind of the things I wanted to share. What time are we at? We're at uh, 4.40. So that's just perfect. Now we can do some questions and answers. All right, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to switch cameras. God, we covered a lot of topics right then and there. That was well, a lot. you said it was going to be a brain dump. It was a brain dump. Okay. Here's the original prototype. I come down here and get the modern version, the production version. I don't really have any cars I buffed out with this either, but a lot. Oh, you've all your tools you buffed out a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's I'm not actually one, one or two. It's like I'm actually one of those instructors that actually does the thing he teaches. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. okay. So, with that, let's see here. Let's get it. All right. Uh, let me come here. All right. Again, question and answers. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll get to them. We're going to do kind of a, a little bit of a lightning round. We got 20 minutes to get through all this. And with that, let's go. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's get all the way to the top. All right, we have Humberto. He's always here. First from Puerto Rico. First from Puerto Rico. Sim Sim Salabim. <laughs> yeah. Ready to roll. And he comes back on here. Healthy and happy new year. And then he also says hello to me and you. Uh, we have, oh, we have the director of success. Good day from Wisconsin. Where's my cheese curds? <laughs> um, Dave Myers, happy new year to all. Thank you, Dave. Then we have, I think we're going to have a couple of these. Uh, Diana, hi, everyone. Happy new year. Uh, we have Larry Singleton. Hola, Umberto and the gang. Uh, Jay, I think my iPad is talking to me. There, now it's shut off. Uh, Jay Daily Detail, hello everyone, happy new year. What a lovely Camaro. Yes. Uh, it, it is now, it wasn't one of yeah, yeah, it wasn't before. <laughs> you go back up to our live feed on the Dr. Beasley channel and you can see the section we did on hand sanding and the section we did on machine, hand dry sanding and machine dry sanding. And I think, yeah, Yancey at some point caught the before on all that. Yeah, um, and this goes to Director of Success. Yes, Jeep, just empty every pocket. <laughs> that was the first thing that my mother told me when I told her that I was getting a Jeep because they're big Jeepers. And she's like, you know what Jeep stands for, right? And I'm just like, yeah, no. She's like, just empty every pocket. And believe me, the name of this truck is Project Bankrupt. That's what it's on all the socials. So yeah, just empty every pocket. Yeah. True story. I, I, in high school, I did a report on the Willys Jeep, and I think the original name of the Jeep, the original, back to the Willys, was GP, a general purpose, maybe some expert, maybe as GP, then they just turned it into J-E-E-P, but it was GP. Ah. Yeah, Jeep, Jeep. Ah. Now I learned something. And I think we're getting some of our furthest people away. Uh, Jack's Auto Detailing Services. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year from South Africa. Wow. All right. All right, 
uh, doctor success says my Jeep's looking good. Um, well, the awesome. back tire's looking good. The yeah, rest yeah the back bad. tire's looking good. <laughs> Chloe's going to be doing the rest. Uh, Larry Singleton's coming in here. Brilliant idea. Thanks. That must have been we were talking about the, the brush. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just again, I think my first video, which is the only video I've seen that dates back that far, is in 2013. So it's over 10 years ago when I was teaching people how to use the Porter Cable because at that time, these cordless rotaries had not been invented. And I will tell you, one time, um, I was in a good friend of mine. His name is uh, Mark Harris. I was detailing his, he's got one of those uh, Ferraris, uh, Magnum PI Ferraris. Okay. Okay, so I always teach people, if you're in the slanted driveway, to start with the tires at the bottom of the slant and then work way up top because if you work at the top, you're all the concrete's going to be wet when you get down to the bottom. For some reason, I forgot my own good advice. Instead of using a porter cable, I was using a Griot's Garage 6-inch DA, which is the Griot's version of the porter cable. I did the back tires. I'm doing the front tires. I'm sitting in water, and all of a sudden, I got shocked. <laughs> oh, man, I got up so fast, went into the garage where it was dry, unplugged the extension cord, then picked up the tool, and ever since then, I've just, like I said, you know, uh, you can use whatever you want to. I know some guys got a cordless drill, but you're, it's going to yank you all over the place. So what I tell people, if you've ever wanted a reason to buy the Flex PE150 cordless, now you've got two reasons. One, the machine scrub tires, or three reasons, the machine applied dressing, and of course, use it with wool pads and foam pads to do paint correction. Treat yourself to a nice gift. Chris McCaffey, owe me one. <laughs> you owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. We have my guy Kirby. Next suggest a suggestion for next week. How to wash tire cleaner off the Jeep back windows. <laughs> now, that's my daughter. She's going to be washing that Jeep tomorrow. By the way, premium wheel cleanser and intensive brake dust remover are acid-free. They are lean alkaline. That's from Director of Success. Yes. So now I'm not worried about being on the back of my Jeep. Um, let's come back here. Rich Nealon, God bless you for machine buffing two... Buff a little, little God, I can't read today. God bless you for machine buffing tire two times. I use AP and Steam Clean. Have you ever tried using a Steam Cleaner? No, nah, you know, it, it probably works, and I always like people to find whatever works for them. But for me, you know, uh, physical physical agitation with a brush is going to work to really get off old tire dressings, uh, tire blooming. Well, that's the browning. A uh, blooming technically is when uh, tire manufacturers create the rubber they add what's called anti ozone when it is meant to it's meant to um migrate to the outside of the tire it keeps the tire fresh so it doesn't dry rot and crack but part of that is is when it meets ozone in the air around it it turns brown so that's what the brown color is it's actually a natural byproduct of the tire preserving itself it's not a it's, it's not a good thing but it's just it's, it's part of the process so of, the tire is bleeding it's part of the saying. chemistry of the tire yeah the tire is bleeding yeah <laughs> okay this is a comment coming in from instagram uh at tight i'm not even trying you know to say I, I wrote the blooming thing for mcguire's for part of their frequently asked questions back when the internet was new and everybody had a fact remember those uh -huh. days they had a fact that was one page long i rewrote it it became 20 pages of microsoft of word with five inch 0.5 margins on all four sides and since i left mcguire's they took it down which was almost like a how-to book their fact now they got just fuzzy fluffy stuff up there all right here's a <laughs> question coming in or a statement coming in from instagram uh first time watching uh one time auto oh long time Auto Geek 4 member, where Mike recommended my first detailing kit. Aww. Hey, thanks for following. Yeah, 12 years there, I think 11 years at McGuire's, and uh, we're on the first year for Dr. Beasley. It's been a good ride. Uh, yeah, Kirby, we are going to get to that at the end of the thing, which uh, I'll bring that up at the end. Okay. Uh, I got something to share here, too. And, okay. All right, we're let's bring up Diana. Um, have used machine tool for cleaning, but not for product conditioner. Nice trick. Oh, people are already picking up on you. Uh, you know, I, I've been showing this ever since 2018 in all my classes. I mean, once, once this thing became available to the public, um, I switched over everything to machine scrubbing. And I, I cannot remember a single student that has taken any of my car or boat classes over the last... Mm, well, that'd be uh, five, seven years, six years, it's 2004 to six years. It's been a while. That ever said, oh, I don't like this. Everybody loves it. It's like, oh, now I just have to justify the 500 bucks to buy the cordless tool. Okay. You know? Now, ponytailing or pigtailing or 
piggybacking, piggybacking. off of that. <laughs> I just could not get that saying out. What would the strategy be for lower profile tires? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, we kind of showed it. Uh, those are pretty yeah, low. Yeah, those pros. are low profile tires. You just do the same thing. You just want to be careful that you don't run the brush bristles into the rim. And again, you know, if you have a lift of any kind, like I used a floor jack and a block of wood, lift it up, got it off the ground. Yeah, let me. I can. Know, no, you, you're fine. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in. It's, see. it's some extra work, but it just depends. You know, if you're doing show car okay. work, you do these extra things. If you're just doing, you know, mundane grocery getters, then. You know, you're just washing I, your car in the but, garage or in the, or in the driveway. But that's what this extension is for. When you have that extension on there, it allows you to get this underneath of that flat spot on a low profile tire because the, the, the body of the tool is pushed out away from the action of the brush. So that's what it helps, helps with. Okay, we got. And Lake Country carries these things. All right, we these. have Shiny Fenders. Happy New Year. Rich Neeland coming back in. Awesome work, Mike. Um, Kyle, Yancey, if you want cheese curds, you better come to MTE. I got you. All right, Kyle. <laughs> All right, Kyle. I'm yeah. going to be there. I want cheese curds. I got, I got four classes at MTE this year. That's so. where I was. Okay. That, that's coming up. Uh, where was that? Did, 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 did Kirby, 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 Kirby. There he is. Please have Mike tell about his MTE 101 class on January 31st, Mobile Tech Expo. Yeah, uh, you know, basically that's going to be like a PowerPoint version of the intense two-day class that we teach. Our three-day includes boat detailing. So this detailing 101 is going to be pretty much everything I teach in the first day and some of the stuff on the second day. And I'm not a big fan of teaching classes with PowerPoints. I quit doing that in our physical classes, you know, years ago, maybe a decade ago. Um, I always find people learn if you, better by doing. So you put the tool in their hand and let them work on something versus have them sit there and look at the wall or look at a PowerPoint for hours while someone's talking. I, I did that class and it bored me to death. So um, but the Detailing 101 is January, it's Wednesday, January 31st. It starts at 1 p.m., goes to 2.45 p.m. And um, I'm going to be having a very picture intense PowerPoint that's going to go from start to finish, how to detail a car. It's going to cover the tools, the products, and the techniques that you need to know how to use and master in order to turn out high quality work fast. You know, one of the biggest complaints I see people talk about in the detailing world is how long it takes them to detail a car. And I regularly turn out cars anywhere from, you know, I, I posted a write-up I did to a, it was a paint correction only, but included wheels and tires, and I turned it out in five hours, start to finish, you know. So, um, Cause you're part machine. I am part machine. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's what the class is gonna tell. Then on Thursday, which is called Education Day, I've got a, a class on glass polishing. I got a class on the NSP primer technology, which is unique among everything that's on the market. And then I teach a class called How to Become the Recognized Detailing Expert in Your Hometown. And it's my technique that without even trying, it, I ended up working on just cool stuff almost all my life. I, I rarely work on a mundane daily driver like a 2018 Honda four-door cord in beige metallic. I mean, I do them. But I mean, just most of the stuff I get is cool, but it comes from word of mouth. And the word of mouth comes from the thing I'm going to teach at Mobile Tech Expo. How to become the recognized detailing expert at your, in your hometown. All right. Then also you guys can go to all the socials. I'm sure that they already have it posted and with all the different places that Mike's going to be, all the other classes and stuff. But we'll get more to that towards the end. So let's get back to the questions. Yeah. Um, we have James S. Hello, Mike. I just try to imagine what these people's voices really sound like. Uh, so would you apply the last step of adding the tire dressing before cleaning the car, just thinking that that would mess up oh, the no. dressing? Oh, no. No, no. I would do that. It's one of the last things I do. But in this abbreviated live video process, you have to show it right now. But yeah, no, uh, the tire dressing comes is, is usually one of the last things. You know, this morning there was a 1960 Volkswagen bus and I came to work about an hour early and the, the bus was completely done, all the paint correction, glass cleaning, chrome polishing. The only thing I had not done was put a dressing on the tire, so I knocked that out real quick. All I know is I'm watching the video and just looking at my tire back behind you. It's nice and matte black. It looks actually very nice. It looks good, yeah. It looks, looks good. good. You did good. I'm glad all everything I know <laughs> finally, you know, you're taking my advice. This is actually a really nice product. You know, uh, the first couple of times I used it, I'm like, eh, it's just another tire dressing. But 
the, the finish that leaves that's dry to the touch, that's the thing I like. And, you know, every time I see someone ask, uh, commenting about people's tire dressings, the first question they ask is, does it sling off? Well, first of all, you should be wiping the excess off, and then it won't, there's nothing there's to no, sling off. Then it won't sling. You know, if you take one of them aerosol ones and, and paint it on until it's dripping, of course it's going to sling off. But what you want to do is find something, quality brand, and Dr. Beasley's, you know, here's my sales pitch, made in America, true manufacturer. Oh, here, you know, you can do a there are close up there. so many... I don't, I'd almost say most, I don't know if it's most to be accurate, so many of the products that people are just buying from uh, blenders and um, large companies, and they're just relabeling the same stuff, adding a different name and selling it to you. We make all of our own stuff, own proprietary products made here in the United States, a small family business to support your small family American-owned businesses. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, all right, here's a couple... Well, this one, obviously, uh, you know the answer. He just said it. Uh, Happy New Year's, guys. <laughs> what is your favorite tire dressing? That's Vaughn Oliver. He just showed ah, you. Tire condition. <laughs> it's on That's all a given. Um, but no, this one right here is actually a really good question. Um, Ray Wise Carver. Uh, how would you clean a coated tire if you didn't use a cleaner and brush? Just car wash soap. Good question. I would use just a car wash soap and probably uh, either a dedicated towel, dedicated wash mitt, or that uh, uh, a soft brush like this, just normal car wash soap. And as long as you're taking care of it, that uh, my experience has always been very positive with tire coatings. I've always used the Tough Shine, mm -hmm. and um, I probably have more articles on how to use it than anybody breathing. But okay. the, 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 the prep work is the key, and that's why I went to machine scrubbing. You've got to get to white foam. Okay. We have Mark Kelly coming in here. It says, hi, all. Hello, Mark Kelly. Um, Kyle comes back in again. And he goes, can you run through the brushes once more? There's a lot there and all different types. Oh, uh, well, they're all wet, but I could. Here. Uh, I have to be very careful that I don't slip on this. All right, well, he's over there off camera. Um, I'm going to come back here. Bass Panther, or Bass Panther. It's good to oh. see you guys back together again. The Batman and Robin in the detailing world. And yes, I'm Batman. He is Robin. Yeah. Is Auto Geek still in business? <laughs> yeah, Auto Geek's still in business. We left and what happened? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, this is the Wheel Woolies. I, oh, I think they just call it Wheel Cleaning Brush. Uh, they come in the kit on the Dr. Beasley's or other websites instead of three. This is the big one. Then there's two other smaller sizes. And the smaller ones are to get in between the barrel and the caliper. This thing actually, this fit in between the caliper. I got lucky. But um, then it's got the, I think it's a nylon. It could be polyester, but it's a very strong. So you can get in there and really shove and break. It won't break. So years and years of satisfaction out of it. I always put it in the slop sink here, run water and rinse it. This is by far, I always tell my good friend, over there at Braun Brush that they should give me a commission every time somebody buys this. There's no, all that down by the bucket. Yeah, I show this for um, engine detailing, uh, wheel cleaning, and interior cleaning. It's, it's just a great brush. It's real pig hair or boar's hair. It's two inches long. And the thing that makes it special is the bristles aren't, aren't too stiff that it's scratchy and they're not so limp that it's useless. They're about 35 bucks a pop. So but you know what? They never wear out. They just they, they last forever. I've never worn those brushes out. Then this is the Easy Speed. There's a whole bunch of people that knock this off, and it comes in different colors. But this is the original. And there's just the benefit to this is just being able to here. bend this. Right, here, let me zoom in. No, hold it down. There you go, right there. Bend this so you can get behind the spokes if you're that OCD person. And those are also great for working in the engine compartment. Engine they do detailing. have a smaller one that works great for motorcycles and the tire yep. spots on your engine. Yep, we just did a three-day class here, and we cleaned the engine. We did a wet wash engine detail on a Ford F-150. And if, had we not had this brush, we would not have been able to get into all the tight places and agitate the nooks and crannies. And I showed this for doing the corrugated, love to say that word, corrugated air tube for the, um, from the air filter to the uh, injectors there. And then let's see, got the one inch round brush. And this is just great for getting into lug nuts, cleaning the fuel door yeah, around the down gas by the cap. Bucket. And also um, uh, around the valve stem. And remember, don't break off valve stems. So guess who's broke off a of valve stem and knows from firsthand experience to teach you? Are this? you speaking from firsthand oh, experience? Man. You know what I did is I, it was on my monster truck and that's all I had in there. I, it was on my, uh, I had a 1987 Chevy Silverado with a 12 inch lift kit and 40 inch tall tires. And I knocked the valve stem off. And that's a big tire. And it's starting to drain down. I took a piece of duct tape. Put, the valve stem didn't break off. It was still connected, but it folded over. I folded it back over in place, put the duct tape on it, and drove over to Highway Tire and had them <laughs> fix it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was that or if, if you want to know about Mike, he always has duct tape with him. <laughs> and I swear he is like the duct tape man. Well, you know what they say about duct tape. If you can't fix it with duct tape, you're not using enough duct, duct tape. tape. All, right. All right. Moving <laughs> on. Okay. Uh, then he had a few other little brushes, but they're all just typical, you know, wheel and tire brushes there. Uh, we have another one coming in from Instagram. Colada care, car care. When, in your opinion, is the best time to use an iron remover? Uh, you know, for using an iron remover on body paint or wheels. But I would go wheels and either, wheels. Yeah, um, an iron remover is great because the it's a chemical way to dissolve and break the the um, the attachment of brake dust to the wheel itself. So it's a safe way to get it to release so you can agitate it off. It also chemically breaks it down. Um, I would use an iron remover on uh, just neglected wheels. Once the wheels stay pretty clean, if you stay up on them, you can just clean them with car wash soap a lot of times. But if they're very neglected, then use an iron remover. Yeah, the only thing I have about iron removers is one time I cleaned, I think it was a Volkswagen, might have been a Passat, I don't forget what it was. But a lot of these cars that have that anodized aluminum trim around yeah. the windows, I sprayed it all over the whole car. It stained that aluminum trim. See, always do a test spot. And ever since then, I've just been real gun shy about using iron removers around anodized aluminum. In fact, uh, for the most part, I really don't use them that much anymore. I figure if I'm going to uh, clay it and compound it with a wool pad, anything that's on there is going to come off anyway. Yeah, agreed. Okay, now we have <laughs> tractor of success. Kyle does not. I mess probably around have more articles on iron removers than anybody breathing, but I just don't hardly use them anymore. All right, um, Kyle does not mess around with his curds. I can vouch for that. Okay. Okay. Good. Game on. Coming for you, Kyle. Uh, oh, Rye coming back in with another great, come on, get up there, with another great question. How to remove a thick coat of petroleum-based tire dressing? Yeah, that's a tough one. So let me, let me speak about that. You know, and I worked for Meguiar's for 12 years, and they made this product called Endurance. Now think about the name, Endurance. It was designed not to come off. It was designed to hold up to wet weather, mud puddles, and just keep that shine going. And God handed to the chemist, they did make a great product. It did last. But when I come across a customer that has that on there, here's what I do. I clean it once or twice, call it good. Um, and I never put a coating on any tire that's had that or a similar type product on it because guaranteed you'll probably never get it off and you have what's called a coating failure on your tire where it flakes off. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those products. I never have been. In fact, someone asked me what my favorite tire dressing was. Until I went to work for Dr. Beasley's and started using this, um, I actually didn't have a favorite tire dressing. I, I hate tire dressings, you know. Uh, the same as me. They're, they're messy, they're gross, and you know. Uh, but this one here, the, the key to this one being a good product is comes back to the cleaning. You gotta get the tire clean and then apply this by uh, an applicator pad or the brush, like I showed machine, and then come back with your your 77 cent Walmart 100% terry cloth towel, wipe off any excess and let it fully dry and it's gonna look great. Okay, all right, uh, the blue brush, I'm pretty sure you're talking about the easy brush. Well, that one you guys is yours, right? This is of Dr. Beasley's. That's a Dr. Brush. Beasley's. Yeah. The other one is the Easy Detail brush. No, the, the oh, this one is the Easy Detail. Yeah. Yeah, that you can find online everywhere. You Made in the USA. That, easy Detail brush. Engine detailing um, yeah. and uh, wheels. Okay, awesome. uh, David Hunt. I'm sure it works good on motorcycle clean. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. Trust me, it works really good on motorcycles. In between the jugs on a motorcycle. Uh, David Hunt, go cordless. I don't regret the decision at all. Didn't lose any thong. You know, I, let me just speak to that. Um, I, probably about 10 years ago, uh, when I was teaching classes over at the Geek, um, I had all these DeWalt, all these Makita, all the 3M rotary, and then I had all these uh, corded flex and cordless. We're talking probably 30 rotaries because my classes run to like 20 people. I think I had some that had 26 people and they were so popular. And everybody goes, oh, it's not as good as the corded polisher, blah, 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 blah. Gets hot. All these excuses. I'll tell you, in that class, first, and I say grab a rotary, the cordless, first one to fly off that shelf. Nobody wanted to grab a corded tool. And then I hear people say, oh, they get hot. Well, you know what? I've buffed out boats at DeWalt. They get hot. They get, if you push so hard, that tool gets so hot, you can't put your hand around the body. It's so hot. Well, these will get hot too but the cool things about these is they're designed to pull air through the tool and keep them cool but yeah in all my classes all we really show is the cordless and that's for the sand, for uh, for multiple set paint correction when we do dry sanding and we got to pull our center marks out and we sand down boats and we got to pull our center marks out all cordless so they get the job done okay all right and here is um, a really good question 
Um, Victor, maybe you chime in on this. Uh, will there be live feeds or recordings of the MTE training available for those that can't be there? That's that from is Mark a Kelly. good question. I, I do not have an answer for that. That is an executive decision above my pay grade. <laughs> it would be nice if someone was there to video it. It would be great. Uh, I know a lot of people cannot make it to MTE, and I know of all the classes there, the best ones are the ones I teach. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Um, then let's go. I'm a props guy. I bring in a lot of props. Yeah, he brought a car as a prop one year. We were the only people to ever bring a car into the convention center, and we detailed everything you just saw here. And glass. And glass. I sanded down the brand new windshield on a rental car, a Subaru, yep. and then pulled out 100% of my sanding marks. All right, let's go here, wrap this up. Uh, Jack's Auto Detailing Services. This, I do believe, is my South America guy that was tuning in. Hi, Mike. Will Dr. Beasley be, products be available in the near future in other countries? Uh, they are available in the UK, um, I, I think, through uh, Motor Geek. Motor Geek carries them. And Chris Ricana, our director of success, is going to be listening in on this, and he could better answer that. And you can always send an uh, email to info at drbeasleys.com uh, and get a hold of Chris that way. Or shoot me an email or shoot me a text. I get my phone number all the time, 760-515-0444. Uh, shoot me a text, give me a call, I'll get that answer for you. Okay, um, last two questions. <laughs> uh, Kyle coming in again. What's the rotary brush, the brush? You know, if you go to search for it, what you want to type in is 5-inch rotary brush. I've seen people sell it as a DA brush, and I've used it on a DA, but... But I think you can find it fairly quickly on Amazon just by going five-inch rotary brush. Okay. It's a product that's actually uh, distributed, mass distributed through um, high-tech products, who was bought out with 3D by Morgan Thaler Private Equity Group. Okay. And that's when that all went downhill. Okay. All right, we have James S. <laughs> Last one. Okay. Any tips for tire cleaning new tires with heavy brown blooming? Did both the hand scrubbing and machine scrubbing, but nothing was working until I temporarily covered it with tire dressing. Yeah, and pr that, that probably that sounds right, because sometimes the tire dressing, the chemicals in there would actually kind of emulsify that brown stuff and help you to peel it off. It's the same thing like when I teach people how to polish the inside of a glass window. A lot of times you get a, a smoker's... Uh, vinyl fog. Smoker's uh, film, film or vinyl fog or just years of gunge in there, and you gunge. spray Windex in there, and it just mixes with it and adds to it. You take a physical polish like our... Uh, GL, uh, NSP GL glass polish, and just by hand with the microfiber app care, go in there and you can actually abrade that film off, wipe the film off, then use the glass cleaner. But, but the same kind of theory. Um, you know, for really bad briar, uh, tire browning, uh, the, one of the things I might try is uh, right behind me right there, see that purple bottle in the front here? Way in the front, way, uh, the premium degreaser. So use an actual uh, automotive degreaser, give that a try. Um, but the machine scrubbing should, with a, with a good product, should get that off there. You know, there's something else you could do that's old school that I've done is uh, get some Comet. Comet. Yeah, get some Comet, old school Comet. What I do is I take and mix it up in a bowl like this. This is a little uh, cottage cheese type container. Mix it with some water, paint it on, machine scrub it, and it'll peel off a lot of stuff. Okay, then the director of success coming in answering that question. <laughs> if we do not have a reseller in country yet, we do offer international shipping. So you can still get your fix. Thanks, oh, Chris. I, I feel like, a, I feel like a, a drug dealer now. You can get your fix. Just call us and we'll deliver okay, it. Okay, we're going to wrap this up real quickly. I just want yeah, to share I'm something coming up, here. Oh. This, this uh, was sent to me by my good friends right Bert and Eon over in the UK, and they put out this magazine called Pro Detailer. Oh, I know what this is. And um, hey! I, I, I'm so blessed when someone says, hey, Mike, would you write an article, you know, create content for our magazine? Because this is, this is the deal. This is the best detailing, the only detailing magazine that I know of, but Detailed it's an it. actual magazine. It comes out twice a year. So there's the Christmas edition and there's the summer edition. And in this edition, which you can go up to Detail Division, Dot com, and you can check with my friend Scott Gokier. I have to look over there to remember how to pronounce his name. It's, it's written on the side of my head. <laughs> Scott Gokier at Detail Division. He is the importer for this for the United States. And I just, I don't know where it's at in here, but there is a full article um, written actually by um, myself and Victor Esplund. He's our, um, Victor. he's our brand manager and total internet guru and marketing guru. And uh, there's a whole story in here on um, the, the history behind 
Dr. Beasley's. I feel like I've, I've read this whole book now because you're flipping through it. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. You know, they have a thing called the index. Dex. Well, you know, I was going to point out the obvious, but hey. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jason Rose, he's in here. This is, these are great, though. Dr. Beasley's page 96. Look anyway. how easy that was. We're teaching them new things, people. Okay. Can AI clean your car? Backstory, Dr. Beasley's. There you go. And that is on page 98 and 99. There's a picture of Jim right there. No, so if you've you ever wanted to know where Dr. Beasley's come from, what the name means, who's behind it, American made products, uh, subscribe to that. Go up to Detail Division. I think it's like 50 bucks to get the next four editions. So you, I don't think you can just buy one. You subscribe to it and you get four or mailed right to your house. Awesome. Bert and Eon, you guys do amazing work. Yep, there you go. Man. Bert's a cool guy. Bert I had fun cool with oh, I had yeah. fun with that guy. We were over at uh, Kelly yeah, Harris's yeah, yeah, teaching yeah. a class where we met Eon and Bert. And yeah, no, great they're, they're, they're cool people. Yeah. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned something from this. I mean, it was a little bit of a brain dump. There was a lot of stuff that was covered. Uh, if you didn't get all the tips and tricks, go back because there's quite a few of them in there. And I actually learned one. I'm going to try applying the dressing with the, the brush now. I never thought of that. Thank you. So <laughs> even I learned something. And I thought I've learned everything from him, and he keeps coming up with new stuff. We've been so. working together for 12 years, 13 years, 12 years, 19, you have to 2009. Me. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. I still have pictures from the first class that I taught at Autogun, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. there videoing it. Yeah, on my Dodge Durango. Dodge Durango. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've been together a little bit. Um, but like I said, like always before, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps out the numbers, and what do you call it keeps us doing things like this. And also, like always, if you have any ideas or something that you would like to see covered, you know, or maybe you just want to see how he does things in the shop and stuff, put it down in the comments and we'll get that worked into the schedule and so forth. I think that we're going through all the comments and everything like that pretty good. And my guy detailing, my daughter's going to be washing the Jeep tomorrow. She's a beginner <laughs> driver, so she's got to learn how to wash dad's Jeep. Yeah. So. With that being said, I think I am, yeah, I'm done. You're done. I just want to throw this out there. It is, uh, what, January 3rd? January 3rd. Today January? is the 3rd. Uh, 3rd. And coming up on Saturday, January 20th, we have a one-day extreme detail class. I'm going to cover extreme prep wash, multiple step show car detailing, one step show car detailing, one step AIO show car detailing. I've got amazing cars coming in. We start at 7.30, goes to 5.30. There's no chairs, there's no PowerPoint, there's no brakes. It's all hands-on. And that class is almost sold out. So if you want to attend that class and you're within driving distance, you can get your airline tickets to get here. This Saturday, January 20th, here in sunny Stewart, Florida, the closest airport is PBI, West Palm Beach. That's the airport code, PBI. You can also fly into... Uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale or Orlando. It's not too bad of a drive to get here, but it'll be a fun class. One of the cars I got coming in, by the way, is Baseco Clearcoat. It's a 1970 black Cuda, all swirled out, one of 646 cars built. All right. All right. With that, say bye, Mike. See you.